All right, well, when it comes to losing weight, keeping it off can be the biggest challenge, especially for those who've lost extreme amounts on national TV. They are the reality show stars battling the bulge, slugging it out on screen and dropping a dramatic amount of weight in record time. You lost 160 pounds. You're the biggest loser in the But for many contestants, the pounds start piling back on as soon as the cameras stop rolling. Now, a former researcher of The Biggest Loser says he's cracked the code, revealing why that style of weight loss doesn't last. And that code cracker's name is Dr Mondo, and he joins us now live from Sacramento. Good morning to you, Dr Mondo. Good morning. Good afternoon here in Sacramento. But yeah, good morning to you guys. Good afternoon there. there. Now, you closely worked with contestants from that show researching their weight loss journeys. So how did that come about? Yeah. Well, you know, it came about because it was really my story that led me to want to do the research. I'm a licensed therapist, and when I was in my doctorate program, I really knew from my own journey that there was so much more than what meets the eye when people are losing weight. And I also knew that there was this big struggle to maintain the weight loss. I just knew that, you know, what we really didn't know as a field um, in regards to the emotional side of the journey was so limited that we had to expand on that. And I thought The Biggest Loser is the perfect place for us to start our research because that's, of course, what uh, you know, so many folks think of when they think of weight loss. So these contestants are obviously taught how to diet and how to exercise on the show. Why then is it so hard for them right. to, to keep up that momentum and to keep the weight off once they go back to their everyday lives? Well, I think a lot of people think initially that, you know, of course they, they struggle because they're no longer in that same environment, right? You know, the environment uh, was such a big part of how they lost the weight. But I think at the same time, what people don't realize is that they're losing so much weight in such a short amount of time that their entire world is changing psychologically. So, you know, in the contestants I interviewed, they talked about how all of a sudden they had new attention from the opposite sex. And, and on one part, they, that was flattering, but that was also terrifying. And then, of course, their partners had reactions to that. Their family and friends were either being supportive or even some were sabotaging their journey. They were still looking in the mirror and seeing themselves as overweight. So really what we had a case of was too much change, too darn fast. And as a result, I think so many people go back to putting the weight back on because that's the comfortable state. That's a very fascinating way of looking at it. In your research with The Biggest Loser contestants, you found that 50% of them actually kept the weight off while the other 50% gained it yeah. back. What are one half doing that the other half isn't doing? Well, the half that we saw that was keeping the weight off, I could ask them a question on day one of their weight loss journey. And that one answer to that question was going to be able to predict how successful they were long term. The, the question was really simple. It was just, why do you want to lose weight? You know, what is the motivation behind your weight loss transformation? And what we found was that people who were keeping the weight off long term, they were actually talking about weight loss differently from the start. So their motivation was long term. It was legacy based. It was something that was going to impact not just them, but themselves and, and generations after them. So, you know, we had contestants say, I have to lose weight because I have to be around for my kids. Or, you know, there's been this history of all the men in my family dying of heart disease, but it ends now. And so those folks were really looking at weight loss from a bigger scale. They were rewriting their story during weight loss, but weight loss wasn't the main book. It was just one chapter in this bigger change process that was happening. And finally, one huge thing is that they were renegotiating their relationship with food. They were realizing, hey, it's not just because I like cake and I like fast food. There's more to that relationship. And so, so many of our viewers out there have similar stories. And I really want to urge people, this is where, you know, we can learn from these contestants. The ones who keep it off, they say, there's got to be more to that. I need to understand my relationship with food better. And in understanding it, you can change it. And that's how you'll keep the weight off long term. You make so much sense because yeah. it is complex, isn't it? It's so complex. And, and I think what you're getting it at is. there is to treat the symptom um, and, and nothing is going to happen overnight. It's, it's a long-term change in attitude, change in lifestyle. 
Absolutely. You know, we know that. I think it makes good common sense, but I think that we have failed people uh, as a health industry and how we're supporting people in their weight loss transformations by not providing enough psychological support. Yeah. So again, we know that we need to have this bigger change process, but I think for a long time we've only been treating the symptom. And so I think where we're at now is we're on the cusp of looking at this research that we have and saying that we have to provide emotional to support to people who are going through weight loss transformations if they want to be successful long-term, if we want them to be successful long-term. It's really an ethical call to action. Amazing advice there. Dr. Mondo, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really do appreciate it. And for more information, head to drmondo.org.